Hello out there YouTube fans, this is Beaker here, the half bird, half pig. And for those who don't remember me, I actually did a few videos on this channel. Watched it, watched, watched a few Angry Birds tunes. For example, the one with Indigo. Piggy Potion Plot. Yeah, that's the, I think that's what it's called. I can't quite remember, it's been that long ago. Anyway, I'm here to read you all the story of Angry Birds Mystery of the Green Bird. So let's get to it, shall we? Yes, we shall. And I'm going to zoom it on so you can see the pictures better. Or at least the words. <clears throat> it was early morning on Piggy Island. Red, Chuck, and the Blues had assembled on the beach to wash themselves. Suddenly, Matilda came charging down the mountain, yelling as she came. Look what I found! When, Ma when Matilda stopped to catch her breath, the other birds looked in wonder at what she had brought. What is it? Jim, Jake, and Jay all asked at the same time. A green feather, Matilda replied. It proves there are more there are other birds on the island. I think it looks like a leaf from some plant, Red said. Matilda was not to be discouraged so easily. You're just jealous because I found it and you didn't, she huffed. Yeah, Matilda and Red can't get in each other's case sometimes. Ask Indigo and Violet. What the birds failed to notice was that a cleverly camouflaged eavesdropper was hidden a little way, a, hidden a little way off behind a rock. He immediately ran to tell the other pigs what he had heard. <laughs> Look at Red's face. Red had been up all night guarding the eggs, so he was very tired. He was already heading to sleep when Chuck came to show off his own discovery. Hey, Red! Guess what these are? A hat and a round piece of glass, Red said. They washed up on the beach, Chuck said, wringing the water out of the cap and fitting it on his head. Peering through the glass, Peering through the glass, he said, Look, it makes things bigger. Now I can investigate things up close. I'm going to be the smartest bird on the island. I'm sure you will, Red said supportively. <laughs> Look at his face, though. <laughs> Looks like he had one too many ciders. I like cider. Anyway... At that same moment, outside Pig City, King Pig was waiting for his breakfast to appear. I want eggs, he bellowed. I'm sorry to report that there still aren't any, Chef Pig said. How about a fried banana? I want eggs! I want eggs! The King Pig chanted, the King chanted pounding the table with his fork. Yeah, this king pig was incredibly greedy, gluttonous, and a man-child. A big man-child. Uh -huh. Chef Pig was about to give up when he noticed the pig, who had been on, the spy, on spy duty, returning from the forest. What's new with the birds? Chef Pig asked once the spy made it over to them. Do they want to give me their eggs? Shag, uh, King Pig asked. No, your majesty, the spy said. They think there is a new bird on the island. Why do they think that? King Pig asked. They found a green feather. The king thought for a moment, then asked, How can we use this to our advantage? Your Majesty, 
If you will allow me, Chef Pig began, whispering into the king's ear, he said, Someone should disguise himself as a green bird and steal the eggs. The king nodded. Now I have it, he said. Someone should disguise himself as a green egg and steal the birds. Imbecile. Um, Majesty, Chef Pig said. I'm sure you meant that someone should disguise himself as a green bird and steal the eggs. Uh, yeah. Greedy and gluttonous, but also as dim as a broken bulb. That's what I said, the king huffed. Foreman Pig can handle the details. Foreman Pig snorted into his mustache, but then he bowed to the king's will. In a bizarre pile of random objects, he soon found what he was looking for. A broken metal watering can. Once Foreman Pig had presented his plan, King Pig assembled his subjects and assigned a volunteer. He pointed at Tiny Pig, the smallest pig in the back row. You will receive the honor of infiltrating the bird's camp and bringing the eggs back to your king. What an honor. Eh, not. The other pigs may have said they were jealous of Tiny Pig, but no one was willing to, to trade places with him. The king chose you, they reminded him. This is a great honor. Tiny Pig didn't feel very honored as he snuck towards the bird's camp. He was more afraid than anything else. But he had to go since the king had commanded it. Oh boy, I almost feel sorry for the poor guy. Ugh. How could anyone fall for a disguise like that? Matilda was on guard duty near the eggs. She was playing a bongo drum while the blues were chirping along with the rhythm of the drum. The other birds were keeping their distance from the noise, but a green stranger was shyly approaching the musicians from the edge of the forest. Excuse me, the stranger said, after he came within speaking distance and cleared his throat. I'm Greenbird, and I got lost back there in the forest. When Matilda noticed the new arrival, she jumped for joy. A green bird! The feather I found really was real! Or so you believe. Huh. Tiny Pig was startled when Matilda pushed a strange object towards him. But it, w but it was just one of Matilda's necklaces made with clamshells, plastic buttons, bottle caps, and, gr and glass beads. This is for you! Matilda strung the necklace around the green, strain the green watering can. When she accidentally banged against it, there was a hollow booming sound. You sure have a hard head. Uh, I'm famous for it, Tiny Pig said in desperation. Sometimes they even call me Hardhead. Great name, Matilda said, and then pulled her new friend along into a rowdy dance. We have to organize a party in your honor. The blues were immediately caught up in the excitement. They started dancing with each other, banging sticks together with the rhythm. It was hard for Tiny Pig to get excited. He was afraid the watering can would fall off his head at any moment. Who knew what the birds would do if they found him out? We have to introduce the new bird to the others. Blues, you stay here. We're going to make the rounds. How could anyone fall for a disguise like that? Honestly. Uh, 
<sighs> of course, introduce him to the most explosive bird first. What are you guarding here? The visitor asked. Tiny Pig had noticed the eggs as soon as he came. They were what he was supposed to steal from the king, for the king. These are our eggs, said Matilda. The nasty piggies are always trying to steal them. Nasty pigs? The stranger asked. Yes, you're lucky you didn't run into them on your way here. But now let's go meet Bomb. He's a great bird, although he does have a slightly explosive personality. Green Bird got a taste of Bomb's short fuse almost immediately because as soon as he saw them, Bomb started to get red in the face. Within seconds, he exploded with a loud bang. They don't call him Bomb for nothing. Maybe it's better if we go to see Chuck. Said, Matilda said. The visitor thought this was just fine. Hmm. Chuck had forgotten all about his plans to investigate the secrets of the island. Now he was practicing rolling the biggest rocks he could move. I'm the bird muscle around here! Chuck bragged to the new bird. Want to have a stone rolling contest? Why do we have to roll these rocks to the top of a hill? Tiny Pig asked. Chuck stopped to think. Well, I don't know. While Chuck was thinking, his rock started rolling back down the hillside. He had just barely, he had, he just barely had, he had time to jump out of the way. Then he ran after it. Hey, you there! Stop! He yelled as he yelled as he ran. The rock didn't stop until it splashed into the ocean. As fast as Chuck is, he sometimes can act like he's got no brain. I don't mean this to be mean, and I'm just stating the facts. Once he reached the beach, Chuck was distracted by some seashells lying on the sand and promptly forgot all about the new bird and the other rock he had rolled to the top of the hill. Matilda went back to her new friend. Let's go meet Red. He's our leader, she said. Isn't there a king here? Tiny asked in confusion. King? Matilda asked. We birds are free spirits. Why would you ask that? Look, what's that up in the air? Tiny Pig exclaimed, pointing at the sky to divert Matilda's attention. Of course, ignore, try to, try to distract someone with something else so you won't have to answer their question. That's a sign that they're up to something not too good. Matilda looked. All she saw were clouds. She looked at Tiny Pig. I thought I saw something. Matilda shook her head. Then Tiny Pig silently heaved, uh, silently sighed in relief. He had almost been exposed. When Matilda and Tiny Pig found Red, he was deep asleep. Matilda nudged Red once. Then he sprang up suddenly. What? Are the eggs safe? Red asked, immediately alert. Then he noticed the new bird. Who is this? G green bird, Tiny Pig answered, his teeth chattering. We're going to throw a party in his honor, Matilda said. Red frowned. He wondered where this where the new bird had come from and whether they would they could trust him. He decided that he would stay cautious. Nice to meet you, he said in the end. All right, let's have a party, but the eggs can... Let's have a party, but the eggs cannot be put in danger. 
Well, at least Red isn't really letting his guard down yet. Keeping it alert. Hmm, what's going on here? As evening fell, the birds gathered around a campfire made of driftwood to celebrate. Bomb was on guard duty. Everyone else had fun eating and drinking and singing. The fire crackled and sparks flew high up in the air. The pigs have been remarkably quiet lately, Red said. Hopefully it isn't the calm before the storm. I believe that most of the pigs want peace, Matilda said. It's just the king. Red nodded. As they say, As they say, complaining about the wind and the rain is easier than fixing the nest. But I still think all pigs are thieves. Well, not Prudence and Penny, good goodness no. They were born as good as gold. What do you think, Hardhead? Matilda asked as the new bird asked the new bird. Hardhead? Red asked. Joe, he's sneaking away, it looks like. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> oh, actually, he is, yeah. <laughs> it's my nickname, Tiny Pig said. He thought desperately about how he felt about this. He wasn't used to thinking anything bad about the king. In the end, he said, I agree. Red and Matilda were both satisfied with his answer. When, they, when the singing started up, Tiny Pig saw his opportunity had come. He slipped away from the campfire circle and started sneaking toward the eggs. Oh. This is one of those scenarios I don't like. You let someone into their family and, you, and they deceive you. Sad. Really sad. Oh, wait. There. Forgot to show the picture again. I gotta do that while doing this. Alright, here we are. Oh, give me a home where no piggies can roam. Where the birds and the eggies can play. <laughs> That's a new spin on a Home on the Range. When the song ended, Red glanced around. Greenbird was nowhere to be seen. Where did your guest disappear to, Matilda? Red asked. I don't know. This made Red uneasy. He didn't like the thought of a stranger roaming around the camp. To Matilda, he said, I'm going to go see what he is up to. Yep, leave it to Red to be the smart one of the group. Red's fears were well founded. At that very moment, Tiny Pig was creeping toward their precious eggs. Bomb, who was supposedly, who was supposed to be on guard duty, was nodding off. The egg's nest lay at the bottom of the exact same hill where Chuck had rolled his rock to the top. That, that is, before his attention span ran out. All of a sudden, a gust of wind upset the precariously balanced rock and sent it rolling down the hillside toward Tiny Pig. And the nest! Uh-oh. <sighs> Look at that. Meanwhile, as Tiny Pig was daydreaming of the fame and fortune awaiting for him after he completed his mission, Danger was approaching from two directions, the rock from above and red from the campfire. Just as the tumbling rock was about to hit the nest, Tiny Pig tripped. The rock hit the watering can, launching it into the air and missing the eggs by several yards. To Red, it looked like Greenbird had risked his life to block the rock from hitting the eggs. 
He came to help the, their visitor up and thanked him. You were so brave. You saved the eggs. Oh, it was nothing, Tiny Pig said. He wasn't at all sure what had happened. In any case, he was happy because he realized he had escaped discovery. He hadn't gotten the eggs, but he still had time. Or so you believe, Tiny Pig. <sighs> when the campfire died down and the party ended, Matilda began putting a bed together for their guest. But Tiny Pig said, I don't want to be any trouble. I want to do something useful. Maybe I could guard the eggs during the night? Aren't you tired? I mean, oops. <laughs> Aren't you tired? Red asked. I'm used to staying up late, Tiny Pig said. Well, go ahead then, but keep an eye out for the pigs and call for help immediately. If anything happens out of the ordinary, you can count on me, Tiny Pig promised. Huh. Oh, but look at the blues asleep. <laughs> they are, they are pretty cute, I'll admit. Oh, gosh, what's happening here? During the night, Red tossed and turned, restlessly in bed. He had a dream that Green Pig was dancing around the nest and jumping on the eggs, grinning wickedly and singing. Oh, give me a home where no birdies can roam. Where the piggies can eat eggs all day. In the dream, the nest wasn't a nest at all. It was a frying pan on a campfire, and Green Pig was sprinkling salt and pepper on the eggs. Red could already smell them burning. <gasps> well, alas, Red, I don't think this is a dream. This is a vision. You'd better avert it, quick. <sighs> Very quick. Red woke up drenched in sweat. What a horrible dream. But it was just a dream, Red said to himself. Green Pig saved the eggs from a boulder that would have crushed them. Why would he want to hurt them? Red still thought it was best to go check how the new bird was doing alone on guard duty. They could never tell when the pigs would try to surprise them. Just as Red disappeared, Chuck woke up and jumped to his feet. What is it, Red? No answer. Red had disappeared from his bed. But Chuck could hear rustling in the forest. Where had Red gone off to? Chuck decided to follow his friend. Meanwhile, Tiny Pig had reached the nest and was, a, and was just about to touch the first egg. Suddenly, he heard someone clear his throat ominously from the edge of the woods. He lifted his eyes and saw red. The bird seemed angry. Tiny Pig was in trouble. What are you doing? Red bellowed as he charged furiously toward the nest. Got gotcha you now, tiny pig. Tried to steal the eggs, didn't ya? <laughs> uh, I was just adjusting this one egg, tiny pig explained quickly. Adjusting? Red questioned, slowing down. He was not convinced by the green bird's innocent tone. Yeah, Tiny Pig said. It rolled out of its nest. As he spoke, Tiny Pig secretly scraped a mark on the sand. Red stopped at the edge of the nest, still agitated. He examined the new bird and his precious eggs for a moment, and then he noticed the mark in the sand. I'd... I don't know what I would do if we lost our eggs. 
I understand your concerns, Tiny Pig said, but you can sleep in peace. I'll keep them safe. Have a good watch, Red said as he left to go back to where he had been sleeping. Remember to shout if you see anything suspicious. Good night, Tiny Pig replied, but inside he was hoping they would never see each other again. Chuck stayed in the bushes to keep watch on the inexperienced guard. He was surprised by how much Red trusted the newcomer. Well, he doesn't really trust him that much, Chuck. Oh gosh, what's going on here? Fearing Red would come back, Tiny Pig didn't dare do anything for a while. He leaned against a tree next to the nest to wait. Hiding in the bushes, Chuck, stare, st Chuck started to getting tired. He tried to stay awake. He tried to stay awake by putting toothpicks under his eyelids so they would stay open. But in, but in the end, they grew so heavy that the toothpicks broke and Chuck drifted off to dreamland. Soon, Tiny Pig was snoring too. When the first rays of sunlight, when the first rays of sun, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> when the first rays of the sun rising over the top of the hill shined on the magnifying glass in Chuck's hat, it focused on the green watering can. The watering can started to heat up. And we know what happens when heat and metal come together. At first, Tiny Pig just felt a pleasant warmth on his head. Gradually, the warmth turned to heat. Then his head was on fire. Tiny Pig jumped up and down, jumped up and tried to wiggle the watering can off his head. He couldn't understand why it was so hot. The watering can wouldn't come off, no matter how hard he tried. His yanking only resulted in causing the watering can to spin around so he couldn't see anything. Help! Help! The tiny pigs panicked. He started howling and running around blindly. He banged into trees and rocks, tripping over roots and coconuts. His panic started to grow. He didn't even remember the eggs anymore. He just wanted to get his head out of the watering can and make it back to the piggy camp. Suddenly, Red, alarmed by the squeals, arrived at the edge of the clearing. Well, looks like Chuck's magnifying glass saved the day. Gosh. <laughs> Red stopped for a moment to survey the scene. The green bird was staggering from one side of the clearing to the other, shrieking eerily and banging his head, his hard head against the trees and rocks. Calm down, Red shouted. You might damage the eggs. When the green birds, when the green bird heard Red's voice, his howling only grew louder and more piercing. I hate to know what it sounded like. He sped up and ran beak first into the trunk of a thick palm tree. There was a clang, and the bird fell to the ground, and the green metal watering can came loose. Coconuts rained down on his head. The bird is a pig! Red shouted in alarm. This is what my dream meant! Well, yeah. It wasn't a dream, Red. It was a vision. Whew, finally. Tiny Pig was still squinting at the light and holding his head when Red rushed toward him and knocked him high into the air. When he finally hit the ground, he was far away from the bird's camp. Chuck pushed through the bushes into the clearing, still waking up. He looked in amazement at the watering can lying on the ground. 
and said to Red, Green Bird's head fell off. Nope, that was no green bird. It was an imposter, a pig in disguise. <sighs> there he went. <laughs> Far off in the forest, Tiny Pig waddled slowly towards the piggy camp. He was embarrassed. He did not want the other pigs to hear how he blundered the, ex the expedition. Hmm. Well, it serves him right for thinking he could get away with the bird's eggs. <sighs> In the clearing, Chuck tried to pick up the watering can, but quickly pulled his beak back. It's burning hot! What's going on here? Matilda asked from the edge of the forest. I heard a terrible cry. Where did Hardhead disappear to? This new bird of yours was actually a pig in disguise. He was trying to steal the eggs, Red told her. Luckily, Chuck, the smartest bird on the island, exposed him. I did? Chuck asked in confusion. Yes. Red had noticed the magnifying glass jutting out of Chuck's new hat and grabbed it, and now grabbed it. You use this to shine the sun on the dark watering can, which got so hot that the pig couldn't stand it, couldn't stand to keep it on anymore. You're a genius, Chuck, Matilda said. It's too bad I didn't discover a new bir kind of bird, though. There still must be one somewhere on the island. You can always, well, you can always dream, Red said. And when this water, and when this watering can cools off, you can use it for your herb garden. Yes, you're right. Matilda said happily. Chuck was slowly starting to understand what had happened. Of course, I noticed right off. I noticed right off that there was something shifty about that new bird, he said. If you ever need someone to investigate something again, Red, just say the word. The smartest bird on the island is at your service. <laughs> of course, Chuck. The end. Whew, that was quite a story, don't you think? Sorry I kept messing up a few words. Since I'm kind of a hybrid, my eyesight really isn't that great. Don't get me wrong, I can see pretty good. Just not entirely well. I think I may need to take up reading lessons. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this little read-along story that I decided to do for you all. This has been Beaker, the Bird-Pig Hybrid. Saying goodbye for now, YouTubers, and once again, happy 15th anniversary, Angry Birds.